like, I hate this. I've spent like two grand on this vacation. It's the only two weeks that I have off work. And this is the worst place I've ever been. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today we are gonna talk about how much you can really expect to travel when working and living on a cruise ship. But some of you may have noticed we are back to using the camera. The phone has gone, so thank you for bearing with me. We've got the camera fixed. We are back in business, which is so good. And also I have a little announcement before we get into the bulk of this video. So a few weeks back, Sail Away magazine approached me and asked me to contribute an article. So it is called The Kaleidoscope of Cruise Ship Crew and it's gonna be out on the 15th of March. It's gonna be available in over 200 WH Smith stores in the UK, which is pretty crazy for me. And also, it's going to be available straight from the website, sailawaymagazine.com. So I'm personally going to be ordering mine from the website, but maybe I'll just nip into WH Smith's, you know, for the for the fun of it. I'm so grateful to Sail Away Magazine for having me, and it would be amazing if you guys would show your support by picking up an issue. But if I'm honest, the fact that you're on this video is more support than I could ever ask for. So without further ado, let's get into the video. But if you are interested in picking up an issue, then all the details are gonna be down below in the description box. So one of the primary motivations for someone wanting to get a job on a cruise ship is to see the world, is to visit some nice places. But how much of the world can you realistically expect to see when working on a cruise ship? This was precisely the driving force behind me wanting to work on cruise ships. I was 19, I had no money, but I knew I wanted to see the world. Working on cruise ships appeared to be the ideal solution. And it was, as you know, I have been working on ships for 10 years and it has afforded me the opportunity to see over 50 countries and get paid at the same time, which is pretty unheard of. However, the reason I have been able to see over 50 countries is because I have been very lucky with the ships that I have been placed on. So let's go, let's go back a little bit. I was told when going to the Steiner Training Academy, I could expect to be there between two and three weeks. I was there eight weeks in total. So I was chomping at the bit by the time my time came. So, you know, cause I had seen, I had seen girls come and go and I just wasn't being given a ship. And I remember going up to my lecturer and I was like, am I doing something wrong? And they were like, no, you're just too good. We want to put you on the right ship. Now I know that I wasn't too good. It was just, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I was too good. So every Friday I was seeing these girls get shipped. You know, they were going to the Caribbean. They were joining in Australia. They were joining in Spain, like all of these beautiful, beautiful destinations. Anyway, seven weeks in, my name is called. Oh my gosh, I've finally got a ship. And they give me this ship and I, oh my God, I remember it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I went on Cruise Mapper. I can't remember what ship it was though. Anyway, I went on Cruise Mapper and it was going around Blackpool, Liverpool, London, Scotland. I mean, don't get me wrong, like Scotland, like these places are lovely, but I'm like, I'm sorry. I've told all of my family members that I'm joining a cruise ship and I'm going to travel the world. Like, I'm not going to leave my family for nine months to travel to Blackpool. Like, I'm just not doing it. So I ended up going to my lecturer and basically saying, like, I'm sorry, I really don't mean to be a diva. But no, <laughs> absolutely not. I said, look, if this is the ship that you're going to give me, then I'm going to go. By this point, I've been at the academy seven weeks, so I had invested a lot of money. They had invested a lot in me because they trained me up to do a lot of treatments. So luckily for me, somebody else got given that ship. I was there for another week, and then I was given Rhapsody of the Seas, which was much more what I was hoping for. I had to join in Australia, and then we were crossing over to Europe. So we went through Dubai and Oman and Egypt, and then we got to Europe and we did Turkey and Greece and Spain. And I was like, yes, this is, this is what I wanted. Now to this day, I do not know whether they changed the, whether they changed my ship because I played my face or whether 
I don't know, the gods above were helping me out. Probably a mixture of both. By the by, I got very lucky and the first cruise ship that I went on visited a lot of places. And then my second and third ship were also absolutely amazing. My second ship, Legend of the Seas, was doing Southeast Asia. My third ship, Radiance of the Seas, was doing Alaska, Australia, Hawaii, Tahiti. And I was just like, yes, this is what I'm talking about. So, you're probably thinking, oh, okay, I'm, if I work on a cruise ship, I am going to see, I'm going to see a lot of places. Yes, you are if you get lucky with the ship, and we'll get more into that in a bit. But we're gonna talk a little bit about time off. When I worked for Steiner, I basically got two mornings off a week. Mornings would mean that I'd start work at 2.30. I'm gonna add that like, I was working 70, 72 hour weeks, so I was very tired. So it was very difficult not to just sleep in on those two days off that I had because I was exhausted. But most mornings I forced myself to get out of bed and either go for breakfast in Sydney or go and see Oman or, you know, whatever destination we were in. But the point is, you can't do a whole lot in two mornings a week. You know, like, if you have to be back at work for 2.30, that means, like, latest you have to be getting back on board is 1.30. So you can leave the port, but you can't do an excursion. You have to be really mindful of your time and making sure you're back on board. Now, I am not discrediting seeing the world via a cruise ship because it's it's been amazing. But I'm just trying to say, probably quite inarticulately, that it does depend on what job you do as to how much you will see. Because obviously, work for Steiner, got two mornings off a week, work for Harding Retail, pretty much had every day off and then just worked in the evening. So I got to see a lot more of the destinations that we were going to. You know, I was able to book an excursion, even if it was an all day excursion, I could do it because I wasn't, I wasn't gonna be starting work until the ship left port anyway. So it really does depend on what job you go for. You know, if you're housekeeping, if you're a chef, if you're an officer or a cadet, you know, you're in the marine side of things, you're going to be working a lot, like you're not going to see a lot of the world. Of course, because of MLC, you can only work a certain amount of hours. And I'm going to make a video about MLC at some point, which is basically time off and how much time off you can expect to have. But I think the best way of describing traveling via working on cruise ships, it's like a taster menu, you know, you go to these destinations and you get a little taste of them. You're not going to have enough time to completely submerge yourself in the culture and have the like backpacking experience which I'm sure you've assumed anyway but it's a really good way of seeing places and knowing if you want to go back for example I had no desire to go to Australia before I went on cruise ships went to Australia through working on cruise ships and I was like oh my god I love it so Australia is somewhere that I would go back just on my own and do my own thing and really I was going to say explore their culture, but I mean, it's basically warm England, but you know, Australians have their own thing going on. And it's the same, you know, I've been to some countries and I'm like, no, I'm not like, this is, but they were places that I really wanted to go before. And I was like, yeah, like it's, it's all right. So it just means that you can see these places without having to like spend your own money. Cause obviously if you have a job on land, you only get a certain amount of weeks off a year. You only have a certain amount of money to spend on that annual vacation and it's there is literally nothing more heartbreaking than when you make the wrong choice and you spend those two weeks that you have off in a place and you're like, I hate this. I've spent like two grand on this vacation. It's the only two weeks that I have off work and this is the worst place I've ever been. So the good thing is with being on a cruise ship, if you go somewhere and you're like, <laughs> This ain't for me, it's okay because you haven't spent your hard earned money on it and you're gonna be in a different destination tomorrow, so it's all good. Do you see what I mean? So think of traveling on a cruise ship as a taster menu. You're gonna get a nice little glimpse, a little experience, a little exposure to lots of different places. And for some people who have the traveling bug, working on cruise ships alleviates that. They've worked on cruise ships, they've seen what they need to see, and they're ready to kind of start their family or settle down, you know. For some people, it just unlocks that travel bug 
further. The point is, you are going to see some great things, you are going to experience some amazing things. Even like just working on the cruise ship is going to expose you to wonderful, wonderful things. Like it's not even necessarily about the places that you go. Just meeting the people that you meet and having the experience of working on a cruise ship is such a profound experience that even if you don't get to explore the ports, like it's still a worthwhile experience to have. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. So if you're lucky, you're going to get assigned to a ship that's going to lots of different destinations and you will get a few mornings or evenings off, well, not evenings, but a few mornings off a week to be able to explore the ports. However, sometimes this isn't the case. So I had a friend uh, who worked on ships and like me, she'd been very lucky. She'd always been assigned on ships that were going to loads and loads of different destinations. So she had seen an incredible portion of the world. And because of this, she was nagging her friend back home and was like, you have to work on ships, you have to work on ships, best thing you'll ever do. Because her friend really wanted to travel, so she's like, yeah, it's an amazing way to travel, you're going to see loads of places, You and blah blah blah. So this friend, who was from Mexico, applied for the cruise ships thinking, great, this is my chance to see the world. And she got put on a ship that was going from Miami to Cozumel, Costa Maya, Playa del Sol. She was basically going around Mexico. So this kind of backfired for her. Yes, she was still traveling and yes, she was still getting the experience of working on a cruise ship, but it's the same as me getting a ship that's going around London and Scotland and Blackpool and Liverpool. It's like, not really what I was hoping for. Hopefully this will not be your experience and you will get put on a ship that is going to multiple exotic destinations but I just want you to be aware that like there's always a small chance that you know you could not get the ship you want but in your interview process or when you know when you're speaking to your recruiter there is nothing wrong with saying that you would really like a specific ship. I wouldn't recommend saying I want this ship because it's going to Alaska or whatever because the recruiter's going to be like ah so you're not really keen on work. Let's say you've got a job with Carnival. Go on Cruise Mapper, look at all of the Carnival cruise ships and where they're going. Decide on two of the cruise ships because of their itinerary. But when you speak to your recruiter, you want to make it seem like it's for work purposes. Oh, what am I trying to say? Like, okay, so let's say one of the ships that you like the itinerary of is one of the newest, biggest ships. You can say to your recruiter, you know, I'm just, obviously, whatever ship I go on, it's completely up to you. But I would just love to go on this ship because it's so big, it's so exciting, it's so new, and I, I like I would just be so excited to go to work every day, and, you know? Or actually this one's probably more likely because the smaller ships tend to have the better itineraries because they can actually fit into the ports. So you could say to your recruiter, you know, I, I really like this smaller ship, I just really think that I would work better on a smaller ship, you know, it's less people, it would be easier to make connections at work, I feel like I'd have a, more, a better relationship with the guests and, you know, I've just got a feeling about this cruise ship. So, of course, you know, you can put me on any cruise ship you want to, but if there was an opportunity to go on this ship, I, I just think I would suit it perfectly. Why not say it? Just plant the seed in your recruiter's mind because you never know they might actually have an opening on this ship and if you don't say you've got a preference they might just think oh we'll just stick her on the bigger ship or the smaller ship whichever one you don't want so absolutely speak to your recruiter and say hey this ship looks really nice but just don't say because it's going to Alaska and Hawaii and I want to see all of these places make it about work make it about I just feel like I'd work better on a smaller ship because it'd be more intimate, I'd, it'd be better at making connections or vice versa, a bigger ship. I would just be so excited to go to work every day and there's so many people and you know what I'm trying to say. Because everything's about planting that seed. So if you do have a preference, then, you know, tell them. But yeah, Cruise Mapper is an amazing resource for looking at itineraries. I 
haven't actually found a website better than Cruise Mapper. You can see every cruise ship, where it's going, where it's been, where it's gonna go, all of that. So if you don't know about that, cruisemapper.com, you're welcome. But yeah, so you are gonna see some fantastic places while you are working on your cruise ship. But firstly, it's all about planting that seed for the ship that you actually want. It's a good taster menu, you know, you're gonna see some places that you've never been before, you're gonna have some fabulous experiences, and if you like it, then you can go back in your off time. You know, just like I did my first contract and like I said, my second ship, because I got transferred during my first contract, my second ship went around Southeast Asia. I got home from that contract, was home for like two weeks and I was like, see ya, I'm going backpacking around Southeast Asia because it was amazing. For that reason and many others, it's a really, really wonderful way to see the world on somebody else's dime. Like you ain't paying for anything, you're getting paid, which, is priceless you know but it is it's amazing so i think this video was a little bit rambly so i'm sorry if you felt like it was a bit all over the place but nevertheless i really hope you enjoyed it um please remember to pick up your copy of sail away magazine if you would like to but thank you for watching to this far in the video i really really appreciate it i hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and as always i will see you in the next video but if you have any questions for me or anything at all please leave them in the comments or you can message me over on instagram at cruisy miss crew but as for now bye